I'm Dustin Harder, and this is Keep On Cooking. Hello there, and welcome to the Keep On Cooking podcast, the only podcast dedicated to plant based cookbooks. I'm your host, Dustin Harder, and it's a solo kind of week here at the Keep On Cooking pod, and I've been so excited to share this book with you. Uh, it is the new farm vegetarian cookbook. Uh, if you're watching this, you can see this cover here uh, full of rainbows and a variety of sort of illustrated food. Uh, as you know, I love to ask authors. I love to ask authors, what's the first vegan cookbook you owned or one that you remember cooking from the most? And uh, or when they first started cooking, right? When they first started cooking vegan food, like what's a vegan uh, cookbook that became a staple for them essentially? And I've had a few guests say, the new farm vegetarian cookbook. And then they would say, you know, the one with the burger and stuff and the rainbow coloring on the cover. And I didn't know what that book was. Uh, but every time they brought it up, my interest was piqued. So I went and got a copy. And I mean, here we have it. And just like they said, it is literally, I mean, it's not a rainbow. It's not like when they said that people would say that I used to think it was like an actual sort of like rainbow over a field. I mean, actually it is. I mean, you got to just look it up on Amazon. You'll see the farm vegetarian cookbook and also the new farm vegetarian cookbook. The new farm is a revised version, but it's got an illustrated cover with like a burger, a wrap, some beans. I see a cheesecake, a bowl of produce essentially. And I think that's ice cream off to the side, but then it's got a border around it. That's a rainbow. And then also a field. It's, it's busy. It's a busy cover, y'all. Um, but when I looked it up, I was like, I must have this. I need to have this. I need to know what's happening in here. So we're going to dive into the New Farm Vegetarian Cookbook, previously the Farm Vegetarian Cookbook. It's a vegan cookbook by Louise Hagler, first published in 1975. It was influential in introducing Americans to tofu. It includes recipes for making and using tempeh and other soy foods and became a staple in vegetarian kitchens. Now, I will be transparent in that a lot of this information I got from Wikipedia, so let's stay at our sources. Wikipedia and also their website, which I mentioned later on, I think it's called thefarmcommunity.com. Uh, but when I get to my notes, I, I will confirm or deny, if that is the website. Uh, but The Farm, it is an intentional community founded in 1971 in Lewis County, Tennessee. It's still up and running today. Uh, you can learn all about The Farm and its history. Here we have it, thefarmcommunity.com. That's where you can learn more about it. It now has a community of about 200 people in Summertown, Tennessee. It was founded on the principles of nonviolence and respect for the earth. So I'm here for it. That's great. The diet on the farm is vegan, which at the time of its inception in 1971 was uncommon in the United States. Uh, UNICEF seeing an opportunity to examine a large group of uh, large group of people all eating the same diet sent nutritionists to the community. And when the experts checked the members' nutritional intake, they found it provided adequate protein, but fell short in providing carbohydrates, fats, and calories. So recipes were developed and provided community members with guidance and following the experts' advice. And that's when the recipes were collected to become this book, The New Farm Vegetarian Cookbook. Um, first published in 1975 by the book publishing company, uh, says that's a publishing arm of the farm. I wonder if that's still true because I know the book publishing company does a lot of things. So maybe that's where it all began, as they say. Um, it was a commercial success for the community. And in 1978, a revised edition titled The New Farm Vegetarian Cookbook, Where We Are Today, was published. In 1982, this book was translated into German and published under the title Soja Total. Is that like German? Do I say Soja Total? I don't know what that means. And I'm not mocking a German accent. I'm just wondering if I need to pronounce it differently. According to its publisher, it was the first completely vegan cookbook published in the United States. Look at that. Um, I wonder how true that is. Uh, it appears, it seems it would be. That, that seems about the time there would have been the first one published. So, and, and this looks like it fits the bill. It appears the original farm cookbook had an introduction by Stephen, 
So that's it. On the on the front of the book, it just says introduction by Stephen, which I guess makes sense uh, because if it was a book created for members uh, originally, you would know who Stephen was then probably with a small community like that. But I dug more and I found out it was the farm leader at the time, Stephen Gaskin. Uh, and there is a very short intro in the new farm version, but it's not credited to Stephen or anyone, so I'm not sure who it is. It could be the same Stephen. I'm not sure. Majority of the recipes appear to be by Louise Hagler. Other cookbooks by Louise since this book include Tofu Cookery, 25th Anniversary Edition, so 25 years of tofu cooking, Miso Cookery, I'm into that, Meatless Burgers, Soy Foods Cookery, Lighten Up with Louise Hagler, Tofu Quick and Easy, and the Farm Vegetarian Cookbook. Worth mentioning, because I thought this was interesting. When looking up Louise Hagler, different bios popped up for her. I looked on Amazon, I looked on Wikipedia, I looked on the farm page, all these different things. And the one on Amazon said, recent life changes have prompted her to take back her given first name of Wendy. So if you want to know more about Louise Hagler, maybe look up Wendy Hagler. And I wonder if maybe Louise was like a different name of hers on the farm, or maybe it's just a middle name. Maybe it's Wendy Louise Hagler, but now she's back to when Wendy Hagler because of, you know, recent life changes. So this says the book emphasizes soy products like soy milk, tofu, and tempeh, and has been credited as one of the first cookbooks to provide easy to follow, good tasting vegan recipes. The farm leader, Stephen Gaskin, wrote in the introduction in the first book that the cookbook was intended to be, was not intended to be, was not intended to be cultish, faddish, or scare people off, but instead to educate readers and inform them of what a vegetarian diet can be. I do think it's interesting, and I haven't found anything addressing this, but it's interesting to me that it, it's called the new vegetarian, the new farm vegetarian cookbook, but it states on their website and you know earlier on in the wikipedia when it said talks about the diet it says they follow a vegan diet so i wonder if part of avoiding the word vegan was because it was so foreign back then and and turned people off um which has been an uphill battle for decades we're finally at a place you know let's give it to miyoko shinner who says uh unapologetically vegan and phenomenally vegan because why why should any of us apologize for being vegan we're just trying not to hurt animals and we're trying to like do a little better for the planet you know um so i say wear that vegan badge with pride i you know i struggle because i i work in a lot of um you know business institution settings where i'm trying to get people to make plant-based food and see i said plant-based right there because we do still struggle with the word vegan. There are still people, um, you know, who are not warmed up to the idea. So it's not so much about being ashamed of the word vegan when I don't use it. It's more so uh, because of what any connotation that somebody has. It's like whatever way I can get to them, if it means I can't say vegan to them right away and I have to say plant-based so they're more comfortable, um, it's unfortunate. But I do do it uh, just so I can like stay in the room, hopefully make a point and get them to make, you know, my vegan enchilada bake or get them to make my vegan uh, cauliflower chickpea masala uh, for their students or for their hospital or whoever, because th those are the sort of institutions I work in these days. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Now, we're going to go through this book, okay? I feel like there's so many recipes in this. I, I want to hold up. There's two pages of contents, all right? If you're not watching the podcast yet, I recommend, I mean, I don't know how much more I'm going to show you some pictures and stuff. But there's not like full color pictures, but I'm showing you a table of contents right now that is four pages long. So there have to be, I think I just flipped the pages for everyone watching uh, or not watching. And now I'm showing the pages three and four of the table of contents. There have to be over 200 recipes in this. And what I love about it is from the jump of that, it seems like a book inspired, um, it's a book that has sort of inspired all of us to do what we're doing already today. It's like, it, it's a book that quite possibly maybe has built the vegan landscape today. Uh, I mean, I, I'm only speaking from what I'm seeing and people who have spoken about this book. I mean, it's like, 
Terry Hope Romero, I think, said it was one of her first books. And then I can't think. I, I think maybe Chad Sarno might have maybe said it. We'd have to go back and listen to the episodes. I could be wrong. So I'm not going to start listing off people that said this was their first cookbook because honestly, I can't remember. But those ones are popping up in my brain as potential ones. And those are heavy hitters in the vegan world, right? And heavy hitters in the vegan cookbook world and just culinary landscape. So like this, this potentially has inspired a lot of things that we do today. And it really gives you things that have popped up. This book has that things that have popped up in the last decade, uh, vegan food that you thought you couldn't have vegan. So when I first looked at this book, I was like, Oh, it's going to be full of like a bunch of sort of like vegetable forward dishes that are kind of like, eh, you know, boring and, and not really full of like, they want, I didn't think it would have items that are like enticing the modern, modern world today. Right. But I was wrong. It's, it's full of items that have been popping up for the last decade in a big way in the vegan scene. It's got mac and cheese. It's got enchiladas. It's got pizza. It's got burritos. It's got sloppy joes. There's a whole chapter on, they call it ice bean, but it's soy ice cream and a whole chapter on soy yogurt. Um, I mean, they're just really, re there's cinnamon rolls in here. You know, there's, there's all the stuff that we've now been making for such a long time. Um, well, such a long time, obviously, because of this book, 1975, but making it for such a long time in terms of the last like couple decades. So this inspired those things. And it was, uh, it, it's like, this could have been a starter guide for all the blogs that started in 2008, I guess, essentially is what I'm saying. It, it's got all the things in here. So there's also some fun pictures throughout the book. It's like a time capsule, really. I mean, I say this word with love, but it's full of pictures from the 70s with hippies making and sharing food. It's it's just beautiful to see, and it's cool to see those pictures. Um, so let's go through the book. I'm going to read the table of contents to you pretty much, and I mean, not verbatim. It's a long table of contents, and we can flip to some of the recipes and get a closer look. Uh, so here we go. Let's see what we got table of cons we got that little introduction there but it's not the one by steven i don't think because it doesn't say the things that he was quoted as saying in a wikipedia i'm more i'm very invested in like i want to know who and how this book was really written and like i feel like it's it was the hands of many people ultimately uh first chapter starts us off with beans so we've got some great guides in here we've got buying your beans cooking your beans also goes a lot into soybeans chili bean burritos refried beans lentil loaf dal kidney beans with sofrito americano white beans uh barbecue soybeans soybean stroganoff uh let's let's flip to that it's got a soy burger as well so making the burger before the burger making the vegan burger before the vegan burger was a thing um so this just starts you off already in the beans chapter they're doing all the things that we're doing now that we think are like oh look it we made this up no no new farm vegetarian was doing it way before us i'm gonna flip to this soybean stroganoff here and see and what a lovely guide to have for beans i mean really and a simple doll in there i'm so impressed by this book soybean stroganoff cook a pot of soybeans and a pot of rice for a sauce to each cup of tofu salad dressing so you're going to make a tofu salad dressing that's in here blend in garlic powder soy sauce and vinegar dish up a serving of soybeans over a serving of rice more than half beans to rice and enough sauce to wet the two well on top so listen this sounds easy it's soybeans and rice and then you're making this tofu salad dressing and adding garlic powder soy sauce and vinegar so this is very versatile and giving you like different things in the book to use different ways which i love because then you're just getting more bang for your buck essentially next chapter is blended tofu we have things like tofu sour cream tofu tartar sauce tofu cheesecake graham cracker crust banana tofu cream pie chocolate tofu cream pie do you see what i'm saying yet already we're only on the second bit these are literally things that have been popping up in the last decade that people are like look what i did it's like no no it's it's been done and it it was done decades ago um not to say it's not so cool what we're doing now but it is amazing to me that this stuff was being made in 1975. isn't that cool uh frozen tofu uh chapter i wonder if this goes into double freezing your tofu we've got barbecued frozen tofu shish kebabs and sloppy steves in buns i don't like that title i mean i didn't know steve but do we have to call him sloppy steve uh 138 i'm gonna go to the barbecued frozen tofu 138 
barbecued frozen tofu. I really just kind of want to see what are we doing with it. Defrost a pound of frozen tofu. Press out excess water. Oh, you're making ribs out of them. So I've learned this great technique lately, and I learned it in, and I don't think they're doing it in this, but I have to think this does give it some of the texture um, that I got out of the frozen tofu technique I just learned. I learned it from Fast Food Vegan, who we had on the podcast, uh, the burger dude, Brian Watson. For, uh, he has a book called Fast Food Vegan. You double freeze the tofu, and it gives you like that sort of uh, chicken nugget texture. It is crazy. You'll see when we have them on, we talk about it more, um, but you should definitely look it up and try uh, the double freeze tofu method. It's amazing. It doesn't look like this is it. It looks like you freeze it once, but I feel like that's still going to give it some of this texture, to be honest. In the double freeze one, you freeze it, you pull it out, you defrost it, and then you freeze it again, and then you drain it. Isn't that bananas? Uh, soy flour, a whole chapter in soy flour where they make soy milk, tofu, and soy flour, farmer's tofu. So we're making tofu from scratch in here. Soy powder and soy butter. Listen to that. Um, I just had Dr. Neil Barnard on actually, and he was talking about, I, I, I was talking to him about the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And I said, well, how, what was it like in 1985? Like what, you know, did you have allies when you were creating your nonprofit? Like, how was that? And he goes, well, you know, it was a different time where we were, we were creating soy milk with soy flour back then so i mean we are so lucky to have all the things that we have today it has never been easier to eat a plant-based diet truly because could you imagine i'm sure some of you listening were around in 1985 and you're like yes dustin i can't imagine i was there i just wasn't um eating vegan i think i was four years old anywho i'll take any chance to say i'm young <laughs> Really, I just gave away. I'm, I'm in my 40s. Y'all, I'm 41. No shame. Actually, by the time this plays, I might be 42. All right. The older but wiser gal for me. Uh, next chapter is soy nuts. And, well, this isn't so much a chapter. This kind of falls in its own. How strange. Soy nuts and soy coffee. Soy pulp. Soy sausage dogs. And soy sausage or sausage. Um... This is kind of amazing, though, because I love that we're getting into soy pulp. So I'm guessing that's whatever you're not doing with the soybeans and you have the pulp. It's showing you ways to use it. It is. It's showing you ways to use it. You're making it in the soy sausage and the soy sausage dogs. Soy sausage dogs. Do we want to take a look at that? Let's see how they're building a soy sausage dog. Okay, so I looked at this yesterday and I don't understand it, but I thought maybe I read it too fast. No. Make soft sandwich bun dough on page 171. We got dough in here for buns. Let the dough rise. Starting at the side nearest you, place hot dog shaped soy sausage. So you got to make the soy sausage first to make the hot dog, which is four cups soy pulp. So you're using the soy pulp for the soy sausage. I just like saying soy sausage. Soy sausage should really be a thing still. Um, like on packaging, I want to see soy sausage somewhere. Uh, cook cracked soybeans, whole wheat flour. Wheat germ, oil, soy milk, nutritional yeast, 1975. Shout out to nutritional yeast. Where the heck did you find nutritional yeast in 1975? Fennel seed, black pepper, soy sauce, oregano, salt, cayenne, all these spices. Delicious. That's great. Uh, fill in, steam on a rack. A lot of pressure cooking in this. So it just says you're going to steam these, these sausages on a rack uh, in an oven proof bowl. And then you're going to pressure cook it. I say that the way I do because I do not like a pressure cooker. In culinary school, they would get out a pressure cooker. Woo! I would run to the other side of the room. I was like, that's not my journey today. So I don't know who's taking that recipe, but it's not me. I will not be using a pressure cooker. Thank you so much. Instapot, here for it. Give me some little numbers and buttons to press. I still run when I see a pressure cooker. Other chefs are probably like, what the heck? Um, that's why I don't really, you know, I kind of present as a chef. Um, but ultimately, I'm just a guy at home who's trying to make things quick and easy. I cut out a lot of steps sometimes that chefs get annoyed with me about even. Um, but I do it because I am I'm a gal on the go. I got lots of things to do. And so I cut steps out sometimes um, just to get to the finished product faster. I don't always press my tofu. That drives some people crazy. But I love to cut my tofu up, put it in the oven, and just bake it 
for uh, 20, 25 minutes. And it's a little juicy on the inside, but crispy on the outside. Delicious. That's a step I don't feel like we need sometimes. Sometimes it's absolutely appropriate to pressure tofu. So I'm not saying one size fits all. What I'm saying here is learn the rules in cooking and then break them to do whatever works for you. All right. That's what I'm saying. Next chapter is salads. Now we've got lots of fun stuff in here. So we got a French cucumber salad, cucumber dill salad, spinach salad, three bean salad, Greek salad with tofu, cabbage slaw, soy milk salad dressing, pasta salad. Come on, give me a basic pasta salad. It's probably delicious. Herb ven vinaigrette dressing, tofu salad, tempuna salad. Do you think that's supposed to be tempura salad? <laughs> Let's look it up. 153. It says tempuna <laughs> it's really making me giggle uh tempuna salad 153 let's see if that sticks we're at 153 tempuna salad let's see what it is steam eight ounces of tempeh for 15 minutes cool when cold great on coarse side of grater y'all know about steaming your tempeh so there's a bitterness in tempeh right you steam it to get the bitterness out of the tempeh so that's why they're steaming their tempeh Again, sometimes the step that I skip, the bitterness doesn't bother me. But I did have uh, an instructor in culinary school who was like, ah, oh, the bitterness in tempeh is the worst thing ever. And like, I bite into, I like to, I will sort of braise my tempeh in like a white, uh, a red wine sauce with like garlic and thyme. Um, and when I do that, it sort of releases some of that bitterness and takes on that red wine flavor. Oh, I made this recipe. I... Did I? Oh, it's in my second book, Epic Vegan. Uh, Epic Vegan. It's like a red wine tempeh with like a beet Alfredo sauce or something. I can't remember. But um, the red wine tempeh is in that book and it's delicious. So a tempuna salad. I'm trying to see if we're making. Yeah, we're making it like so. The, again, we're using the tofu salad dressing on this. It doesn't look celery salt. So we're going for a bit of a, a tuna situation here. So tempuna salad actually really like that name, but it also makes me giggle. Tempuna salad. How many times can I say it? Um, also, I'm shocked. 1975, we got tempeh in here. That's amazing. Tofu salad dressing. You're getting that. That has been used several times in this book already. Thousand Island dressing. Creamy Italian dressing. Fruit salad dressing. Ooh, I wonder if it's that like, like creamy cheese fruit salad. Remember, anyone have that like cream cheese dip that you dip fruit in? Mm. I mean, no reason not to know something. Let's go check it out. Let's go check it out. Is it like a cream cheese, cream cheese situation? Fruit salad dressing. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh-oh, we got a ringer in here. Maybe this is why. Okay, so they use honey. There's honey in this book, which you can sub out with agave. It's one tablespoon. But you got pineapple juice. Let's say agave, even though it says honey. Celery seed. Oh, now I'm confused. I don't know what this is then. Ooh, I don't like this. <laughs> okay, listen to this. So it's a fruit salad dressing. Okay, so you're stirring this into the tofu salad dressing again. So that tofu salad dressing is a base. And I'll tell you right now what it is. It's one cup tofu, oil, vinegar. Again, doesn't tell us what kind of vinegar, just vinegar. So I'm going to assume a white vinegar if we're doing this back in the day. Uh, honey, so let's say agave. Salt, blend until smooth and creamy. That's your tofu salad dressing. Into that, you're putting pineapple juice, agave, celery seed, dry mustard, and onion. Fresh onion. I will make this and get back to you because I don't know what we're going for here. Also, when we're saying tofu, I don't know if we're talking silken tofu, if we're talking firm, extra firm, medium, because we're putting all these liquids into it. So I, I would think that a soft one would get real loosey juicy. Um, so maybe you'd want to use like a medium one, but also I don't know if they had soft, but uh, all right. Apparently I need to do more research in this arena, basically. Oh, y'all, I skipped to like the second page. Oopsie. All right, so let's go back to where we were. So at the top of the book, after beans, we've got dips. Black bean dip, jalapeno dip, tempu, tempeh cashew spread, green herb dip, curry dip, green chili dip, olive nut spread, onion dip, pink dip, and guacamole. Um, I want to know what the pink dip is. What is the pink dip? Pink dip, pink dip, pink dip. 
pink tip is tofu, onion, oil, vinegar, salt, ketchup, spelled C-A-T-S-U-P, ketchup, career cumin. That actually sounds pretty good. Okay, so the ketchup is going to turn it uh, pink. I love that spelling, ketchup. We have a whole chapter on textured vegetable protein, TVP. Uh, so that's fun to learn how to use uh, temp, uh, textured vegetable protein in burritos, taco filling, chili dogs, sloppy joes, chili beans, TVP gravy. I'm guessing those chili dogs are using the sausage dogs that they make later in there. We've got Italian dishes. So we got eggplant parmesan, a pizza, spaghetti balls, or burgers. So that's going to give you, notice they don't call them meatballs, spaghetti balls. Um, you're making that with the TVP, some meatballs or spaghetti balls there spaghetti sauce with tvp they have that in here and a lasagna we have a nice lasagna here mexican dishes yes 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 uh we have chili rellenos uh masa tortillas corn chips michael's tamales so that's where i feel like we've had uh contributions from uh, members who lived on the farm essentially which i love um and corn puffs masa dumplings now i just had masa dumplings for the first time at La Samilla here in Atlanta. It's a new restaurant that's opened up here. It is fantastic. I highly recommend it. Reservations are hard to get right now, but I have another one for my birthday. Uh, and I just went last week and I went two weeks before that. So David and I are not shy on making our reservations at La Samilla, but it had these masa dumplings. Uh, and in this book, it's very simple. It's masa, baking soda, salt, white flour, baking powder, and sugar. But that says for sweet dumplings only. I feel like I want my dumplings to have like a little edge of sweetness, even if I'm using them in savory. Um, and then, oh, it's got a tamale pie in here. Oh my gosh. Enchiladas, chilaquiles, and Ellen's hot tomato salsa. So Ellen and Michael have made contributions to the Mexican dishes section. There's a sprout section that has just one recipe. Lori's stir-fried vegetables with tofu. Thank you, Lori. And now we get to, I mean, I wouldn't say chapter. These aren't chapters, they're sections. A whole section dedicated to nutritional yeast, okay? So we've got buckwheat groats and golden gravy, cheesy crackers, and these are like cheesy crackers that are dehydrated, right? Yeast crepes, macaroni and cheese casserole, and melty nutritional yeast cheese. So let's look at the melty nutritional yeast cheese and see if this is something that we've, we're kind of all doing. No, we're not. I mean, yes, we are, but yeah, okay. All right. So it's a half cup nutritional yeast, a half cup flour, one teaspoon salt, half teaspoon garlic powder, two cups water, a quarter cup margarine, and one teaspoon, it says wet mustard. So I'm going to assume like yellow mustard. That's very basic and sounds delicious, to be completely honest. I have learned with my mac and cheese sauces now, I went on a rampage the last decade trying to create the best cheese sauces and you would use, you know, a bunch of different weird things and I've gotten back to a place where I'm like, hey, the more simple, the better. Like, just give me a little bit of butternut squash, some cashews, a little, a dash of nutritional yeast, some salt, and maybe uh, a skosh, maybe a skosh of white miso paste. Yum, yum. Cream, uh, blend that up till it's creamy, dreamy, smooth. Love that. Um, so this is along the same kind of thing. It's it's going back to the, to the basics, right? Going back to basics, like Christina Aguilera says. We have Uncle Bill's section that has onion rolls, pickled herring, knishes, and pickled locks. Uh, I mean, all, all the yummy, the locks, I mean, just bringing it on. We've got soups, Ellen's good for you, noodle soup, onion soup, minestrone, pesto, Roberta's good soup. Thanks, Roberta. Split pea soup, Roberta's potato soup. Roberta likes soup, y'all. Cream of potato soup. Thank you so much for the soups. I love me a soup. And then we just have a section called gluten. It's just called gluten. That's all it's called. Gluten. And it says basic raw gluten. So we're going to assume that's seitan, essentially. Then we have a gluten roast. I think probably a variation on that basic raw gluten. Oven fried gluten. Suzanne's gluten steaks. Janice's barbecue gluten ribs. Barbecue sauce and gluten burritos. Listen, I love no shame in just saying, hey, we're serving up a plate of gluten. 
kind of like embracing it. Isn't that nice? So now, okay, this is the thing that I'm starting to see here. I'm trying, I'm reading this to see. This is when you used to have to um, make, you had to make your own vital wheat gluten essentially. And you did that by, let me read it to you. So you've got eight cups of wheat flour, half unbleached white or whole wheat and half gluten flour, two to three cups water. Knead 10 to 15 minutes until you have a smooth elastic ball of dough. It should spring back when poked. Put in a large bowl, cover with water, let soak an hour. Knead it under water, kneading out the starch and holding gluten together. Change water when it gets milky, let it rest. Repeat the process, kneading, changing the water and letting it rest several times. So when the water stays almost clear, you will have four to cups of raw gluten ready to be spiced, oiled, and cooked. So you are washing everything out just to have the gluten. This is before there was vital wheat gluten. Isn't that bananas? The process is just, I mean, people think making seitan is hard now. Think about it back then, my goodness. So we've got a whole, here we go. This is where I messed up because I, I flipped, because there's four pages of contents and I flipped to the next one. We've got tempeh, a whole section on it. So making tempeh at home, preserving the tempeh, tempeh starter, Indonesian fried tempeh, pan fried tempeh, Albert's tempeh topping, barbecued tempeh, sweet and sour tempeh, yes. Cream tempeh, tempeh cacciatore, tempeh with peppers, tempeh sausage, and sauerbraten. Sauerbraten. I'm going to guess that's like a, a tempeh brat, sour braten. We have a miso section, miso salad dressing, creamy miso spread, Japanese miso, soy milk. We've got the preparation in here, vanilla milkshake, soy nog, which I'm going to have to look at. My husband loves soy nog. Banana smoothies. Also have vanilla pudding, chocolate pudding, lemon pie filling, and tofu whipped topping. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this uh, vanilla pudding is prepared. I'm curious because I feel like pudding is one of those things. Pudding. I haven't, um, I don't buy it a lot or anything. There's a couple of nice vegan versions out there, but you got to kind of really be looking for it. So this is, mint. oh, that's soy milk. Let's see here. Vanilla pudding is at page 100. Oh, look at these pictures. I love it so much. Look at her making her. She's making soy milk. Oh, I love these photos. I just think it's so cool to have this captured like this. Okay. Okay, okay. Give me some pudding. So we got sugar. Cornstarch is the thickener that they're using. Soy milk, margarine, vanilla, and salt. Okay. So you gradually blend it all together. Cover and cook over low heat, boiling gently for five minutes. Remove from heat. Blend in the margarine vanilla. Pour into dessert cups or uh, baked pie crust and chill. Top with tofu whip topping. Look at that. Same sort of for the lemon pie filling. Ooh, and they've got this picture in the middle. You can't really, but it's a parfait cup with the puddings in it. This is making me want pudding. I don't know why I got so intrigued by the pudding when I saw it. I was like, ooh, pudding. Okay, next is that ice bean chapter I spoke of. So it's soy ice cream. We've got Elizabeth's double Dutch chocolate ice bean, pineapple sherbet, honey banana ice cream. So again, I'm just going to swap out agave banana ice cream, carob ice bean. That's not for me. No, thank you. Strawberry frogurt and orange vanilla frogurt frozen yogurt. Uh, I'm going to look at the, can you tell how basic I am? Cause I'm about to say, I'm going to look at the, um, vanilla ice bean. I am a purist at heart when it comes to like ice creams and yogurts and stuff like that. I just like simple and plain. Sometimes I like some Jenny's ice cream there. I think they're all over the States or at least here on the Eastern side, but Jenny's ice cream, and I know they're in stores. There is a seasonal vegan one here in Atlanta. Oh my gosh, I'm going to make a version to post a recipe of. It's like my goal this summer. It is a lemon bar ice cream. So it's got the, it, it basically is a lemon bar with the shortbread cut into chunks and mixed into a vanilla ice cream. Are you kidding me? I'm going to, it's so good. David and I, like when we get it, we have to like, we either need to go in all in and just eat the pint or we have to be like, okay, we're going to do a scoop now. And then uh, another day we're going to do another scoop. Usually it's going all in and we share the pint because it's so freaking good. You can't put it down. And when we went back, we, we got it twice this summer. We got it once for ourselves and once when my dad visited. 
we went back and they didn't have it. They were like, it's seasonal. We don't have it. It was fall. And they had something like pumpkin something. And we were like, that's not what we want. We love pumpkin. Don't get us wrong. But we wanted that lemon bar ice cream. Okay. Vanilla ice bean. So it's one cup sugar, three cups soy milk, pure vanilla, oil, and a pinch of salt. Easy peasy. Talks about liquid lecithin in this. Blend it. Be sure to blend it well, it says. Put in your machine and let her crank. So using an ice cream maker for this. We got a section on soy yogurt preparation. We have Richard's soy yogurt in here. Thank you, Richard. Yogurt cottage cheese, yogurt cream cheese, yogurt whiz, yogurt cheesecake, yogurt uh, cheesecake, and then cheesecake crust. Guys, I, know, I hope I'm not driving you crazy by turning into all these pages. I just, I'm getting so intrigued by this. What is Yogurt Whiz? Is anybody else curious? Yogurt Whiz. It's a drink. This drink is best made with fresh fruit in season and is a great icy drink for a hot summer day. It's got one cup yogurt, one cup ice, fresh fruit, strawberries, raspberries are good, sugar, and a dash of salt. Sure, sounds good to me. Why not? A little smoothie, I think, is what I'm going to call it. Yuba. So we have a, a it's not a whole section. It just says Yuba. So we have fried Yuba in here. Um, which is this tofu skin. Do I have that correctly? I don't know. Miyoko has an unturkey that David and I, I just attempted to make it. He was like, that's all you. It's in her meat cookbook. She's been on the Keep On Cooking podcast a couple of times. You can go check out the episode on her meat cookbook. But And I should have asked her. I, I didn't know when I had her on about this recipe, the details. But it calls for Yuba, and I couldn't find any. And I watched her video, and it's like a stretchy tofu skins. So I found these tofu skins at the Asian market and like they weren't stretchy like that. I just didn't have success with it. So I I need to find me a big sheet of Yuba. I don't know if I'll try and make that on turkey again because the thing is, I think it's really cool that there she has this recipe for an on turkey, but it's very intense, right? There's like four pages to it and there's all these different parts to it, which I don't mind. But when I get to my holidays now, I'm looking forward to that like tofurkey roast or whatever vegan roast that like is available because like, I love it. Like I've gotten used to having that. And it's like, to me, that's my version of like a Turkey essentially. Not that I need a Turkey, but like, it's my version of like a protein for the day. Um, and I love how David and I love the tofurkey. We love the tofurkey roast. Love it. Love it. Love it. It's an OG and we love it. And no apologies. We freaking love it. We love it. Anyways, next chapter is tofu. Um, sorry about the tangent on the unturkey. It's delicious. You should try and make it, but I don't. I don't think I will again. Just more so because I cook all the time, and I don't want to cook on Thanksgiving, or I want to do the bare minimum. All right, tofu section: deep fried tofu, pan fried tofu, breadings, barbecued tofu, tofu pot pie, tofu grilled cheese sandwiches, soft scrambled tofu, tofu spinach pie, tofu noodles, tofu manicotti, crepe noodles for manicotti, and tofu quiche. Yes. And then this is where we kind of were before. We talked about the blended tofu with the sour creams and the tartar sauce and the banana tofu cream pie. Talked about the frozen tofu. We talked about the soy flour and making soy milk from scratch. We did the whole salads. We did the soy nuts and soy uh, coffee we talked about. So this is where we left off because I was talking about that fruit salad dressing that was confusing to me because it, I thought it was going to be like that sweet, creamy cream cheese, cream cheese dip that you dip your fruit in, but it's not. It's like a, uh, a tofu dressing that then has some sweet in it with the pineapple juice and the agave, and then it's got fresh and minced onion in it. So I think I should make it to report back, but um, I don't. it's not really calling my name. Like at the moment, I'm not like, ooh, I need that for my fruit. So I just would like to have my fruit as fruit. I don't think I need a dressing for it. That moves us into vegetables and casseroles. And I love this because I love a vegetable and I love a casserole and I love them together in a vegetable casserole. We have a hash browns, oven fried potatoes, scallop potatoes, potato mushroom casserole, ratatouille, vegetable curry, Chinese fried rice, fried green tomatoes, stuffed peppers, Janet's sauteed cabbage. Damn it, Janet, you did it. Broccoli stir fry, cabbage carrot casserole, millet, millet and peas, ethyl peas. She only just checked in. Can anyone tell me what that musical that's from? And stuffed mushrooms. So. That is a good chapter. I think probably a crowd pleaser. Again, not chapter, a section. Yeast breads, a whole section on yeast breads. We got Barber's whole wheat bread, rye bread, high protein soy bread, anada, anada, an, anadama bread, anadama bread. Let's see what that is. I don't. I've never heard of. It might be someone's name, or it might be a type of 
bread and I'm a jerk. It do, gives me no um, uh, description at the top. If someone knows what Anadama bread is, please let me know. And thank you for bearing with me as I read. Th- I, I thought the best way to do this book, because there's so much in it, was to really just through, read through all of the table of contents to give you a, a really good look at like the variety and plethora of things that are available in this book to you. So we're still on the yeast breads here. That's where we have the wonderful cinnamon rolls, pecan rolls, quick Italian bread, Serge's French bread, Danish pastry, croissants, and Janet's bagels. So we're making bagels, vegan bagels and croissants in 1975. That's outstanding. I wonder if there's any honey or anything. Let's look at 177. So that's going to be our croissants. Oh, and they give you like a little how-to. They give you a little how-to in here. But that just says Danish, Danish pastry. So you're sort of making that margarine, flour, yeast, water, lemon juice, cardamom, sugar, salt. Okay. All right. Easy ingredients. Stuff that you have probably. Quick breads. We got Janie's Good Biscuits, scones, skillet cornbread, Boston brown bread, banana bread, and coffee cake. Cereals, granola, mellow meal, and farmola. All right. I'm curious about this mellow meal here. What do we got? Four cups cornmeal, soy flour, cracked rye, millet, cracked buckwheat, buckwheat meal, and then the farmola I was curious about too. That's cracked wheat, cream of wheat, or cream of wheat, cornmeal, soy flour, and cracked rye. I'll be honest, that sounds like some 1970s business that I'm not very interested in if I'm being real. Um, But I'm sure it was delicious uh, on the farm. That farmola really hit the spot back in the day on the farm, but I'm going to just call it and say not for me, but maybe it's your thing. I don't know. Breakfast breads. We got bran muffins, French toast, pancakes, old time buckwheat cakes, Marna's good griddle cakes. Come on through with the good griddle cakes, Marna. I'm going to look at this French toast because I'm curious what they did. I have been on the quest to make a delicious vegan French toast for years. I finally did it. I finally did it, at least in my brain. Um, David liked it too. I finally did it a couple months ago uh, for uh, a project I was working on, and I was so proud of it. But part of the uh, conquest has always been sort of like, what's the best batter to use on the outside of the uh, bread to emulate the egg, right? Um, And what's going to sort of not stick to the pan, but also like, uh, you know, fry up perfectly so you have that like outside texture with the squishy like bread inside texture. I think I finally got there. Um, of course, I guess you could use just egg and milk these days, but we don't buy just egg that often. We like it, but we don't buy it that often. Um, and I kind of like, to me, when I get it, it's like, uh, I don't know, it can be a little pricey. So I'm like, I'm not trying to roll through it really fast in French toast, but I guess that's a good use. That's a great use of it. Okay. French toast. We have soy milk, flour, and sugar, and nutritional yeast. Guys, why are we putting nutritional yeast in the French toast? That's none of my business. All right, farm. New farm, I knew you were going to get me somewhere. You got me. You got me there. I'm like, what's happening? Okay. We all know I love it. Sweet tooth. We got the sweet stuff chapter next. Apple cobbler, blueberry cobbler, blintzes, white cake, marble cake, fluffy icing. It ain't flat as fluffy icing. Karen's cocoa cake, easy fudge frosting, Miss Dora's taffy, brownies, sweet potato pie, Louise's gingerbread, honey cake, applesauce cake, carrot cake, bread pudding, carob carob chip bars. Again, I'm going to say a quick no thank you to that, but I honor it. Walnut balls, chocolate chip cookies, peanut butter cookies, and oatmeal cookies. So again, all of these things now we've been doing going, oh, look what I did. They were doing it. They were doing it up. They've been doing it for years. Um, The farm really started this out in cookbook format for us. So that's awesome. Thank you, New Farm. And they end things off here with the nutrition notes section, protein for complete vegetarians. So that was the point of this book. If you remember me talking about that in the beginning, it was that a study was done on the food they were eating and it was saying they were getting all the protein they needed, but not the right amount of carbohydrates and fats. So there's a complete, uh, a protein for complete vegetarians in here and, and, uh, different 
nutritional notes for them as well to follow to have a complete diet a word about b12 prenatal nutrition feeding your baby and feeding your young child a vegetarian diet and that my friends is the new farm vegetarian cookbook that i was so excited to share with you today listen i think i got it for 10 bucks i say it's a healthy fun buy to have and um something to maybe play around with in your kitchen because i think the cool thing about this is which is what i love about cooking and people getting into cooking is i think you can take things from this and you can make them your own like you can once you make like that gluten roast or whatever it is you can really start to play with it i think that's where a lot of us in the food world it's recipes like this that we learned from so i think it's a a really fun book to have the new farm vegetarian cookbook and um, it has received some praise over the years so in 1990 vegetarian times called it a staple in vegetarian kitchens and in 1994 named it one of the best five vegan cookbooks so Think about that, 94, that's almost 20 years after it came out. And I know veganism was not huge in the 90s yet either, but to be named one of the best five vegan cookbooks in 1994, 20 years after it came out, like that's pretty cool. But again, not much was out then. I wonder what other vegan cookbooks were out in 1994. We should do a deal. I should look up Vegetarian Times Best Vegan Cookbooks 1994 and see what the list is. Do my research before I got on here. That would have been fun to list right now. Food Historians. William Shirtliff and Akiko Ayogi, Ayayagi, Ayoyagi, Akiko Ayayagi called it pioneering and influential. I don't disagree there. The Vegetarian Journal called it a famous cheese alternative cookbook, noting its recipe for macaroni and cheese casserole, which uses nutritional yeast as a cheese substitute. The Fellowship for Intentional Community called it a classic simple put and of course it's 2022 now right and the farm is still going you can follow the farm on instagram you can find them at the farm community and if you want to do a deeper dive you can find out all you want to know at a very extensive website at thefarmcommunity.com i hope you enjoyed this look into the new farm vegetarian cookbook and honestly If you're looking to zero in on some basics and foundations of vegan cooking, like I said, I don't think it's going to hurt to have this in your kitchen. I hope you'll come back and join us next week for a brand new episode. Please tell your friends, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you aren't sick of me, you can follow me on Instagram at the vegan roadie. And of course you can check out my website, veganroadie.com. Sign up for a newsletter there. And now you keep on cooking. And Hey, remember it's nice to be nice. This has been a Muzzy Cat production.